one of the key differences that make an inquiry teacher what they are is their um, the way of seeing the student actually, that they see the student first and foremost as a competent, capable, curious, um, almost partner in, in learning. So they, and they see the light in each child. They find it, they find what it is that makes that student intrigued and interested. And there's always something in everyone. Inquiry teachers, ask more than they tell. They, they do tell, but their dominant way of working with students is through questions and through the right kinds of questions. So they know how to scaffold. There's a kind of image of, of the inquiry teacher as this kind of laissez-faire, um, uh, hands-off teacher that simply lets the kids do what they want. Um, that's been a very persistent image um, and it comes from some poor iterations of inquiry. But in fact, the opposite is true of the best inquiry teachers I know. They are teachers that know how to sit with the student, to carefully scaffold. They know their curriculum so well that they can um, move with the student's interests in order to come to that curriculum. They have a very um, uh, strong repertoire of strategies and approaches. I mean, in some ways, when you think about teachers that might uh, rely on a textbook to do the work for them or that, and I still see it, that simply give kids worksheets to fill in, surely that is abdicating responsibility. Um, Maybe it would be even be better for those kids if they were able to just go in to find out what they wanted to find out. I think what inquiry teachers do differently is that they, they're prepared to share the journey with their students. They're prepared to say the important words, I don't know, I wonder how we might find out. They are not simply a kind of passive guide on the side, as they're often described. They're very much in the centre. They're alongside the student. They are highly sophisticated practitioners. They know where it is. They're wanting to take their students at a big picture level, but they work often with the interests, the questions that the student brings to the learning in order to take them further. They listen, they observe, and they respond to what students reveal to them. They're also teachers that are great designers, so they bring a kind of design thinking disposition to their work. Goal four of the Sustainable Development Goals, Quality Education, describes STEM and STEAM curriculum. There are currently two educational approaches to teaching children in the US, the STEM curriculum and the STEAM curriculum. STEM focuses on educating students in four specific disciplines, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEM incorporates these principles into a cohesive paradigm that encourages motivation, engagement, and employs real-world applications. STEAM adds the arts to education and uses the five points to guide student inquiry, dialogue, and critical thinking. STEM supporters believe that curriculum naturally involves the arts. Examples include product design and the communication skills needed for language arts. STEAM supporters say incorporating the arts into the other disciplines devalues arts importance. These two forms of teaching are not too different from each other. Exploring opportunities where art naturally fits into the STEM narrative can help create a healthy balance. Treating art as an applied subject, such as math and science, will give students a new discipline to learn that can also be applied to real-world situations. Design classes can help students learn how to create logos and organize information into presentations. Performing arts, like drama and speech, 
can help translate into technical writing and persuasive writing skills, which are abilities used in technology-driven and marketing career fields. Creative planning calls for students to use the right side of their brain to think outside of the box, which can come in handy when needing to create content and innovative thinking. Science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics are all important factors that make up the curriculum. Being able to learn about all of them will lead to well-rounded and versatile professionals. STEAM is an educational framework that brings reality into the classroom. It connects the different subjects together in the way that they would relate to the business world and to each other. S is for science, T is for technology, E is for um, engineering, and A is for arts, and M is for math. So it's science and technology interpreted through engineering and the arts, all based in a language of mathematics. It connects the different subjects together in the way that they would relate to each other. I like it because you get to think and create. When you get to see it in action, you have to see the students do what they do. They think with their hands. It's a grand opportunity. It's just creating those 21st century skills that our students need. So that's what we gear STEAM toward for our students. with an idea we saw online about how some students have been building arcade games um, strictly using cardboard boxes and tape. And so they have to be very innovative in trying to figure out different ways to make things using those materials only. So what could we do to keep these up a little bit more? We could just get them cardboard underneath. Yeah, so why don't we prop it up with some cardboard? That's a great idea. I want to be an arcade designer when I grow up. They've had a good time, they've been extremely engaged, and it's been a great problem-solving activity where they have to figure out alternative ways to make things. It's just so great for the kids to be creative and use their imagination and see how arts can be involved in engineering and math and all these other careers. The arts include the social arts, the manual arts, the physical arts, and the fine arts. To be a successful STEAM program, we realize that integration is the key, meaning that from classroom to classroom, these concepts have to carry on to each other, they have to tie into each other for things to really relate and to make sense. That's how you're going to reach every student, you're going to reach every type of learner when things are integrated and fully connected. Right now, you're going to balance this butterfly on the end of this pencil. Okay, so it's a simple machine. <laughs> So we start out small with just small things that you have to balance and they get to go, when they go to PE one day they'll get to make structures using their bodies and they have to balance. But our, what we're working up to is our culminating activity where we're going to the Space and Rocket Center. So before we get to go there we're going to actually make rockets and launch them and everything that we do we always write about it. I need you to write three sentences about balancing. I developed STEAM in 2006 while I was a graduate student. I started using it in 2007 and I kind of worked the kinks out of it myself in the classroom for the few years. So I started doing trainings on it in 2008. So when schools come to me and they want their teachers to be trained in STEAM, what they're really looking for is for me to help them make that mental shift to start taking their curriculum and expand it to be STEAM. We thought we knew what STEAM was, but until you really try and have Georgette to show you how these disciplines are really related, how mathematics is the through line of life, what technology really means, that it's just it's the tools that you're using and, and how we can relate all these things together. Georgette Yakman was so phenomenal because she gave us a wealth and a plethora of knowledge that we needed to actually branch our STEM school. The most important thing for me was connecting students with careers um, that were based on STEAM. So I want to stay in school and learn more about engineering and robots so I can be an engineer, engineer when I grow up. 
I want to be an engineer too. Make the world a better place. People ask me all the time, what's a good way to teach STEAM? And I use the game of Go. It's left and right brain developed, it's artistic, it's mathematical, it's the Asian equivalent of chess. It's a paradigm shift, it's opening your eyes to a different way of doing it. And once you've seen that, you realize that this is it's the way to go. They have to be able to see it, taste it, use their senses to learn, and then they don't forget, you know. Because this is just good teaching. This is project-based children getting dirty with their hands and creating these objects for them. And so, and that's the real winners in all this is, is the students. Full of